A sunny beach, a perfect playground, or a slave market where children are for sale. We are talking about the possible loss of a generation here. The gap between wealth and poverty has created a cruel industry. There is not something like relationship or love. You call it a business. It is my body and it is your money. Where the child is the commodity. Bought and sold on an open market, sometimes by people they love. Among the animals, it is only as the human who don't seem to care or to protect our young ones. I will never like any girl to have like my problem. Kenya's Indian Ocean coast, a paradise for honeymooners and holidaymakers, is also a trading post where children are bought and sold for sex. Some of the one million tourists who visit Kenya every year don't come to appreciate the game parks or to enjoy the beach and the ocean, but to have sex with children. Here, hiring a child's body is easier than renting a car. Child sex tourism is rampant and has been for a number of years. But it has grown over the years because tourism is also growing. Studies show figures between 30 and 50,000 children involved in child sex tourism, uh, aged between uh, 10 and 17. In resorts like Mombasa and Malindi, the trade in children is so rife that some hotels now warn their guests about the problem. It's a time bomb. It's getting worse and worse. Children are getting involved in, in the trade, and they're not only coming from Mombasa, some of them come even from the neighboring country. We have Uganda. Tanzania, and even Rwanda. The prospect of tourist cash lures thousands of children, some orphaned by HIV AIDS, to Kenya's coastal resorts, where they end up destitute and vulnerable. There are children who travel all the way to Mombasa and Malindi. Some of them have been lured about better opportunities, and they end up uh, being uh, sexually exploited. Then there are those children who've gone there by themselves, there are also children who come from within the coastal region and their parents seem to tolerate this kind of practice. Joyce is an orphan who was brought to Mombasa by a relative who promised her a job. She was 12 when she went to work as a prostitute. She's 14 now, HIV positive and still working. My auntie organized a client for me and uh, because she already took the money, so I had to go. So it was very nasty, but I had to do it because uh, I was sent inside there, the room. So it was painful, I was crying, but I had to do it. I normally start by at, at 5 p.m. I start by taking shower, then dress up, find something to eat. Then by 7, I'm already out. So sometimes you can spend the rest of the night out but you don't get even a single coin. After darkness falls, the flesh market, like the tourists, moves from the beaches to the clubs. This is the part the travel brochures don't show you. Child brothels are common all along this coast, and they're tolerated by the authorities. They're often run by women called aunties. Agnes is one of them. Agnes says she's doing them a favor. Wakija kwangu siezi wafukuza na wachukua na kaa nao kisha natoka nao nje na tuenda beach outing 
kutafuta wazungu. Kwa sababu wazazi wao walishindwa kuwatekea, walishindwa kuangalia mpaka wakakimbia long distance kuja kwangu kwa sababu ya shida ingekuwa kwa wanaangalia vizuri hawangi toka kule wakaja kwangu. Grace Achieng rescues child prostitutes. She was a sex worker herself until 2005. Now she persuades around 20 children a year to leave the sex trade. Lakini ukipata kama kama hivi akikubali yule kukupatia pesa, si unaweza kufanya kitu. I ask her hotel she can do she said she came to Malindi 2 years ago. She has not saved. Even if she would like to do something like business, she don't uh, she don't have money. Some of them are trafficked. We have those children of sex workers who stay, stay with their mothers and they are trained by their parents. And then we have children who get into sex work due to poverty. Mary works the local tourist beaches, even though she is five months pregnant. <laughs> Rose works the same beach. Her mother has been selling her to clients for between seven and fourteen dollars for the past five years. Ani namse damangu kuzam kuzamnas. Wale ani wale wateja mama ngo le mbo na wale wateja mama ngapo na kudaku mamnas pad. Ndo na nipati ya mama ngu ndo yana fanya dilu kwa ona nipati ya pes. A lot of time, really, the victims uh, don't have any protection from their immediate family. Either the parents died or maybe even the parents are the ones pushing them out to find some kind of uh, mode of livelihood. The reason parents sell their children's bodies is often economic desperation. I wouldn't say it's a catch, really. It is uh, just a survival tactic. We've realized that uh, it's very difficult to penalize people. Girls, you go out to a sex trade with approval from their parents. So then how do you arrest it? It's just by creating awareness. It's by improving the way of the families. 50,000 people fight a daily battle against poverty in Tudor, one of Mombasa's biggest slums. Guda Brighton works door to door, persuading families not to prostitute their children in exchange for food. Those old men take advantage of them. They can give up something every day. They can buy them potatoes, they can buy them chips, they can buy them sodas. And in that situation, in return, they have to have sex with them. Claire's family were hungry, so she sold herself in exchange for food. <laughs> Nikifanya mambo ya ngono unapata pesa. Nilikuwa nanitishia. When this man could sleep with her and give something to the, to the mother. Not that the mother wasn't aware. She was aware, but because she was getting something every day. So she could allow the issue to go. Poverty is pushing millions of people across Africa's borders in search of work. Children are part of that migration too. Ruth was one of them. When my father died, my auntie was beating me a lot. When she started saying that, you know, we can go to South Africa and we can get a new job. The auntie trafficked her thousands of miles, hoping to sell her in South Africa. Police stopped them at the Mozambique border, but they didn't rescue her. They tried to rape her. Auntie said, no, no, we don't have money. They said, okay, if you don't have money, give us the one girl. Now my auntie said, what? Take her. My thought, I was so scared. I was so scared. So they said, okay, if you don't have money, remove your clothes. So I said, why should I remove the, my clothes? Will you give me another clothes? No, they said, you just remove your clothes or I will shoot you. So I said, I'm not removing. Another man came from my back and put it here a knife. 
They took me to another room, to the boss room. I said, you girl, you're a very bad girl. I started screaming, screaming. When he was opening his belt, the phone rang. And he said, I have to go. I'll see you later. Ruth managed to escape the rapists, but was caught again and held captive for a month before running away. I was so scared when I was told I'm going back to Kenya, because I thought maybe my auntie can come again. Maybe she'll find me. She was returned to Kenya and now lives in an orphanage in Mombasa. They were so nice to me, yeah. They just talked to me very kindly, and then I got used to them. They're like my parents, like my family. I said to myself that I'll start a new life. When darkness falls, Kenya's child prostitutes become even more vulnerable. Salah Margetti works every night, trying to rescue underage girls from the street. Hi. I was just having a conversation with three girls, and I have to convince them to take care of themselves, to take care of their bodies, even if they're getting money, yes, but uh, their body is very important and they are healthy wise. Here, the price of a young girl can be next to nothing. If you are a local tourist, the young girls will earn between $1 to $5, and the tourist will give the young girls between $50 to $100. Each and every day, there's a change. There are so many young girls who are coming here. Some, they have one or two kids, and they have to because other business cannot bring for them enough money to satisfy their families. But they think a white man will sort out their problems. That's how they convince themselves, but actually it's not the solution because most of them, they were raped by their parents. Some, they were pregnant by um, men who abandoned them with the children. So they haven't dealt with the problems that they had. And that's why they end up coming to the nightclubs. Carol earned her living as a prostitute before she met Salama. <laughs> Salama puts girls like Carol into training schemes. This scheme is supported by the travel operator, Kuoni. They target their funding at the resorts plagued by child sex tourism. We define some destinations as a core destination or hotspot destination for protecting the children, for example. So we have a project here uh, that is funded by Kuoni to support the Child Welfare Society. They have free centers here along the coast where they train former prostitutes to learn a proper job. Kuoni runs trafficking awareness workshops for hotel managers across the world. I guess different kinds of exploitation. Trafficking is one. Kuoni's approach is to persuade rather than accuse. We do not necessarily want to blacklist them. We want to help them to improve the standards. So we do not want to throw them out of the program. So we talk to the management. We try to work together. In 2006, the Kenyan tourist industry adopted a code of conduct, outlawing child sexual exploitation. Two of the first to sign were hoteliers Mahmoud and Shahino Visram. I think the issue 
that needs to be addressed is about getting the other uh, hotels involved. I think the owners need to take lead. They have to believe that this is something that needs to be eradicated. Uh, we need to protect our children. Though many hotels here have signed up to the code of conduct, far fewer implement it. Part of the family experience in this hotel is a briefing on the realities of life in Kenya. I'm here to help you make the most of your stay. If you're in a hotel and you see that it's happening, I think it's your responsibility to let the hotel know that you're aware. Mm -hmm. Here, they prohibited so much so that everybody is stopped at the gate and asked who are you visiting and asked who are you with. And my experience in other hotels is sometimes tourists will come in with them and so there's no questions asked who this person is. Hotels like the Sun and Sand refuse to tolerate child exploitation. But many others allow their guests to sexually abuse local children on their premises. James was only six when he fell victim to a European tourist. It happened when he was begging on the beach. No one on the beach not after a pesa. So I mean, doctor, you come on, my ring, you know, but I couldn't wait, so I sent on a party to cool. James's father thought their money problems were over. I left for I'll put work in the beach. Dio kazoeza zoesha na mzungu. Siku ya kwanza kajenambia kumbwa mzungu amentunuku. Waibu asema na tusa arsadi ya nyumbani. Sasa mimi ni kama mbia, basi ni vizuri kwa sababu rasi si tutapumzika mashaka. Umbe yeye si kusaidia bali anataka kuniharibia mtoto wangu. Hawa mimi napoa kama matano na wanatenda kitu kibaya. Hakuni baka. Hasa mimi nikamwambia mtoto wangu kwamba tabia hiyo mimi sipendi. Kafadhali tuwe maskini hivi hivi. After telling his father what the tourist had done to him, James ran away. Two or three days later, his father heard that his young son had been taken to a hotel by the tourist. Polisi mbubi ya ripoti kapata obi namba. Kasema niende ya kisho subuhi, nikalala paka subuhi nikaenda. Kasema sasa gari sahi haina mafuta, kwa hivyo itabidi uende. Hasa mimi nika decide kwamba, basi kama serikali hawezi kunisaidia, itabidi mimu yenye chukwe ujukumu la kuna kutafuta mtoto wangu paka nipate mwenyewe. Tukaenda paka, kuenda paka pale, tukakaa, paka sahine ikabidi, kalitafujo pale, paka yule mtoto, tukamona. Lakini mzungu hatu kumona. Kwa sababu, ikiwa mzungu watafanya makosa na serikali haiwezi kusikiza. Even though laws do exist here, the tourist got away with it. Legislation exists because we have the Sexual Offences Act 2006 with very good amendments done in 2007. And it clearly outlaws child sex tourism or exploitation of children. But what happens is the implementation part of it. To what extent are the law enforcement officers uh, enforcing these uh, laws? Sometimes even children go, they report the matter to the police, and the police tell them, oh, you brought this on yourself. So the children feel helpless. Even senior politicians believe that powerful vested interests are preventing the law from being implemented. It's a hidden thing, it's guarded. The people who do the trafficking are the who is who in this Kenya. That is why it has been very, very difficult to, to overcome. But I can assure you, if we just get two, three big shots and align them in court, then people will not do it again. After hearing James's story, we asked Grace Achieng to see if it was still possible to buy a child here. She approached a local man on the beach close to the hotel where James was abused. You said you are going to provide a boy yeah. and uh, a girl. Yeah. Which class? The girl <laughs> is in class seven. The girl who is in class seven is 10 years old or 11. 10 years. And the boy is nine. The boy is 10 years. It's the one whom I'm going to bring to you. Uh -huh. He's my cousin. Your cousin? Yeah. I brought him from home uh -huh. because he's learning through me. Uh -huh. So you're providing some shelter for him? Yeah. We need these children 
we need them to be grown up people like us tomorrow. So both government, tourists, and even community workers and parents should unite, come up with a way forward of bringing and protecting our children. With no protection from the law, communities need to work on eliminating the root causes that make children vulnerable. In the village of Kikumbala, donations from hoteliers and their guests are helping to fund essential medical care, a nursery and primary school. So we have come together and decided that we should have these programs on teaching our children what uh, they should be involved in. When one is approached there, they are able to say no. They are able to make choices. The initiative of the Child Friendly School in Kikambala has been done. It was launched last year and it is going to continue in our school. We see it as our responsibility to prevent commercial sexual exploitation of children. We want to protect the minors. We want to protect the weakest of our society. They need to market Kenya specifically for tourism, but emphasizing that Kenya has zero tolerance to child sex tourism.